as directed by the Spirit of God. So the person that God asked me to call out by name and ask to repent, um, or otherwise risk the judgment of God upon himself and his ministry, is someone called Jerry Eze, Pastor Jerry Eze. Uh, my American audience may not know him, not know him, but those in Nigeria and the Nigerians in the diaspora, I think will are more familiar with him because he's based out of Nigeria. He has a prayer, I, I put prayer in quote, called um, NSSPD, something about what God cannot do does not exist. But anyway, he has this prayer shrines, God called them shrines all over the nation now world he goes and holds them now all over the world so i want to address you personally um my brother ha <sighs> yeah so the lord said you should repent you should repent number one of your doctrine of the de of devils um that what god cannot do does exist what he cannot do does exist God cannot or does not answer the prayer of sinners. God does not answer prayers amiss that we pray to keep it on our lost. God does not answer the prayer of the unrighteous. God does not answer the prayers of those not in relationship with him who are in sin, who are out of order, who are in rebellion. God does not answer prayers to, I said it, you know, to, to, of greed, of greed and covetousness. You get the drift. I'm sure you catch the drift by now. So what God cannot do does exist. He said you should stop it. He said your prayers are actually demonic, that you are opening demonic altars and portals around the world through your prayer movement opening the portals to familiar spirit demonic spirit unclean spirit seducing spirits because your prayers are not according to his will and so they're not going into the third heavens where god is they're going to the second heavens because God told us, Jesus told us how to pray. He said we must not pray like the heathen, right? You know, with vain repetitions and chants. Oh, hi, 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 fire, Holy Spirit. He said we shouldn't do that. <laughs> Remember how, how, um, how was his name? Elijah the prophet was taunting the prophets of Baal and the Baal worshippers. Right? That's how they pray. That's how heathen pray. And so when we pray like that, we're tapping into all those familiar spirits. We go into all these um, kindaluni kind of things and frenzies. Stop it. God is displeased. He said you should repent. Thirdly, you know, you're praying and you're saying you're coming to the Lord's table. And their, their holy communion now are like libation to gods, to idols. It's like idol worship. It is idol worship, not that it's like. And the scriptures tells us that, you know, when we come to the table of the Lord irreverently, you know, that um, many are weak and many are sick and many die. And that um, Hebrew says that, you know, we should not come and mess with the blood of Jesus because there's a sorrow punishment awaiting those who just, you know, belittle the blood of Jesus. And you see, you might be mistaken for the testimonies you receive as an endorsement of your ministry that actually you are praying to the almighty God who sits in heaven, the heavens of heavens, right? Yah, 
But the Holy Spirit said, I should remind you that there's something called lying wonders. Magicians and things like that, they, they, they can... They have testimonies. Muslims will tell you they, they pray and have testimonies that you can't dispute. People in white garment churches who tap into all kinds of marine things, and they have testimonies too. Those who go to witch doctors, they have testimonies, right? So are the testimonies are not an evidence of God's presence. Have you heard of the placebo effect? Have you heard of the placebo Go and do some research about placebo. New ages can manifest things through the power of belief. We can use our imagination to bring things into life by projecting astral travel. That is all that is happening in your meetings. It's displeasing to God. Very much so. So the Lord said you should repent. You should shut it down before he shuts it down. Yes, he said you should shut it down, come to him in humility, repent, let him cleanse you, let him purge you, deliver you from all those demonic influences in your theology, you know, from the word of faith, prosperity, preaching that you have been exposed to, because God is not your heron boy, God is not our uh, gene in the success bottle. God is not Father Christmas that we just command and tell to do things and to pray and we bring our laundry list to Him. No. We pray according to His will, according to His mind. We come in humility, you know, to seek His face and do it the way He said we should do it in His word and be in relationship with Him first and foremost. <sighs> So he said you should come, repent, shut it down before he shuts it down. Shut it down before he shuts it down. And then come and learn. Yes, he will purge you, deliver you from all those false doctrines and demonic influences, that voices that you have now exposed yourself and the ministry and the whole world to. And he will start showing you from his word what it really means to be in prayer and um, how it's a function of a relationship with him. How repentance and all of that is required. And how to approach the table of the Lord. And how to have gatherings that doesn't bring judgment, but brings his blessing. He said, if you don't repent and heed this call to repentance, he will shut it down. And then what Corinthians 1 Corinthians 11 verse 30 says about those who irreverently approach the table of the Lord will begin to happen in your ministry. Then you will be weak, ill, and sleep. And he said you'll begin in your house. You'll begin in your house. Repent. Stop it. It's not according to the will of God. And he's displeased about how you have not speaking right of him, misrepresenting him, aligning him. He doesn't take it lightly. And how you're just making the blood of Jesus a light thing. <sighs> I pray that you will heed this call to repentance. And for all of you who are his followers, he said that that altar, that shrine, is already under his judgment. We will, if you guys don't repent, you keep calling in, thinking God is some, somebody you can just give in to, claim it, receive, and just send around, and stop all these demonic things, that like portals and things you're opening up, all familiar spirits. If you don't stop this idol worship, it's idolatry, this Jezebelic worship. What starts with Jerry Eze, the Lord said, will spill down to some of you. Mm -hmm. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So there is this American woman, should I call her American prophetess or American preacher, whatever. Prophetess Bola is her name. She is now calling out Pastor Jerry Eze, that Pastor Jerry Eze will always use in his prayer NSPPT that 
what God cannot do does not exist. In her own understanding, that's what I can say. She said, what God cannot do does exist. That God cannot answer the prayer of a sinner. God cannot answer uh, those that are covetous. God cannot answer. I mean, she listed a lot and a lot. But she forgot that one. Yes, God cannot answer the prayer of a sinner. But if the sinner asks God for forgiveness of sin, God will answer that sinner. So does she means, uh, is she trying to tell us that any prayer that the sinner makes, that God will not answer, the sinner will just die, just like that. Forgetting that the same Bible said in the book of Luke, that with God, nothing shall be impossible. And in fact, Jesus said, he came to call the sinners to righteousness. He didn't come for the righteous. And that's why when the sinners call unto him, call upon him, he will answer. So, the woman went ahead. In fact, I could see envy, I could see jealousy in whatsoever thing she's saying that uh, Pastor Jerry is she should repent that he's uh, running a demonic altar and all blah 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 blah. You know, that God's judgment is already on Pastor Jerry Eze's altar. I understand actually that this is a time that many preachers, prophetess in quote, fighting for visibility. So for them to achieve that, they would want to, you know, um, uh, uh, attack or uh, you know call out already successful men and women of God that the freeze had tried that many times and it seems not to be working out for him I think his own chips are down and I know there are a lot of there's one now called Ebed Damina he will come out and uh, you know call out uh, the likes of um, uh, uh, Pastor E. A. Deboj, General Overseer of Redeemed Christian Church of God. This is a man who has been in active ministry for more than 40 years, if I'm not mistaken. And you are trying to correct him at this time. You know? So, what this prophetess, Bola, I don't, I don't even know if he's a prophetess. You call someone demonic and you're in, your, in your words also you are calling him brother. That he should repent. That his altar is demonic. Uh, people are being deceiving people and all of that. They are using... Uh, zip, uh, something mind effect that there are some people that can use mind the lying wonders that the man is using lying wonders is she not the one that is using lying wonders God obviously did not speak to her the spirit of God is not an author of confusion so she's confused and even afraid and worried about people that are following her here is a man he's calling out a man who will wake up early morning in, in leading millions of people in prayer and there are a lot of testimonies i mean you know all over the world gotten from pastor jerry is his prayer administration and she came she came out from nowhere and then she wants to tell us who god has called and who god has not called and what god can do and what god cannot do and what god cannot do does exist you see there, there was a time apostle johnson suleiman said if you want to use the Bible to tell lies, you will get a Bible verse to support it. If you want to use the Bible to do anything you want to do, you will get a portion of scripture to support that. So, she is able to say that God does not answer the prayer of sinners. God does not answer the prayer of greed. God does not do this. God does not do that. Forgetting that when a sinner, there is a, 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 scenario, a scenario in the Bible. One is a Pharisee, one is a hip, uh, one is a, 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 um, a sinner, one is a Pharisee who claimed to be a hypocrite. They are, both of them, you know, come, uh, 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 were at the place of prayer. The other one was saying, God, I thank you because I am righteous than the other person and this. But the other one was asking, so God, forgive me, I'm a sinner and all of that. God answered the prayer of that sinner than the one who claimed to be righteous better than every other person so this is a woman who i can say po is positioning herself that uh, to be better than pastor jerry is to her she has gotten it all right she's doing it all well and then pa to pass to her pastor jerry is is um, having a demonic culture pastor jerry is is misleading people Pastor jerry is uh altar um, the god's judgment has come upon such altar uh, and the people following him should be careful and all of that. I see a lot of this in Christianity. You rarely see this even in Islamic religion. You rarely see this in other religions. It's only in Christendom. And that was why Apostle Paul said that 
the Corinthian church, they have every gift, but he called them a carnal church. They have a lot of gift. Uh, the Corinthian church in the Bible, they, they are, we are perfected in gift, in spiritual gift. But in relationship with the brethren, they, they, they were zero. They have no uh, good relationship with brethren. That was why Paul said they are yet carnal. I see a lot of carnality in the body of Christ. I see a lot of carnality in Christendom. So why would this woman just come out and then start saying that what God cannot do does exist? I can state categorically that what God cannot do does not exist. In fact, in the book of Romans, it said, the Bible said, God will have mercy on who will have mercy. He will have compassion on who he will have compassion. You cannot ask him, what, why did he do this? Even when, when, they were, when the Bible, I think it was Paul that was writing to the Romans, how God chose uh, Jacob instead of Esau. He said, nobody can, the potter, the, 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 the clay cannot ask the, uh, the, the potter, what you are making? What are you making? So, God decides to do whatsoever thing he does. Look at the Bible in the Rehab. Rehab decided to uh, save the spies that came to spy the land. And that was how not just Rehab, her entire family was saved. She's a sinner. She's a sinner for crying out loud. So there are so many instances in the Bible. Cornelius, you know, the man who God answered this prayer. You know, a lot of people in the Bible that God answered their prayer that are sinners. How about the, the Samaritan woman? Even Jesus himself, Jesus himself met her at the well. And after talking to her, she ran. She ran to call her villagers, call other people to come and see the man who told him everything about herself. So if we are to follow what Prosperitas Bola is telling us, Jesus wouldn't have gone to the well where the Samaritan woman who had married how many husbands, who is obviously a sinner, you know. So God, what God cannot do, does not exist. But you know, God is calling all men to repent. The Bible says God does not delight in the death of a sinner, but He's calling all men for repentance. And you know, in this time, we are in the era of grace. That was why Paul asked, Can we continue in sin that grace may abound? Say, God forbid. If it, we, we are in the time of the prophets, if we are in the time that we are, you know, the, the law uh, was having is a, a, a preeminence. If you sin, you know, you could be struck to death, you will just die go lifeless but here we are in grace the, 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 that was why paul apostle wrote in romans chapter 8 verse, verse 1 he said now there's no condemnation to them who are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit in christ has set off free from the law of sin and death so you know today i see a lot of prophetess bolas because they want to be known be relevant by all means so they feel the best way is to just you know jump on people men and women of god who have been approved by god approved by men who who have track record traceable records of working of close work with god some 30 years some 40 years and the likes and they come to tell us that they are the voice we should listen to they come to tell us that they are the standards that we should look up to. These guys are wasting their time. You know, it's even shameful. A woman of her age, she should, she should, at her age, I think she should be a grandmother by now. But look at what she's just pouring out there, pouring out on social media. How many people do, 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 does she command? How many people are following her? And she wants to tell us, Pastor Jerry, is, it, is this, is that, is this, you know, is, is this grace, so what these people are doing these days?